Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to ace the Fibonacci sequence interview question in JavaScript. Now this is a very important interview question and it's a very common one. So I hope you stick around to the end of the video when I explain the pros and cons of each of the solutions that I'll be giving you, as well as giving you some hints as to how you would do it in another programming language and the space time complexity of each solution, which I think is a very good thing to at least have a, an understanding of when you're solving it. Let's get going. So the prompt is usually write a function that returns n element of the Fibonacci sequence. And for a little bit of background, the Fibonacci sequence, the two preceding ones add up to a certain number. I'll give you a little box of what each n element is and what each Fibonacci number should return as. So the Fibonacci sequence is also known as a golden ratio. I don't know why you need to know that, but it's cool because it appears a lot in nature. Patterns such as spirals of shells and curve of waves, seed heads, pine cones and branches of trees. So your first approach might be to do a iterative, I know how to spell iterative. <laughs> so your first reaction might be to make an iterative solution and it doesn't matter that it's naive, but let's just call it what it is. It is a bit of a naive solution in terms of time and space complexity. However, you'd rather walk away from an interview or from showing off your programming skills by actually solving it than optimizing in the beginning. So let's call this Fibonacci. I'm doing a function declaration and the prompt is that it takes in a number n and we want to assign an array and put in the first two of the Fibonacci sequence. This is why we're calling it the naive solution because usually when there is a for loop involved, you can bet your coding money that it's going to be a little bit naive. And when we loop through, we want to start at the index of two and go up until but not including the given number and we want to increment. And then we're gonna take the array and push array i minus one plus array i minus two. Then when we return the array, we return array n, array at n minus one. And if we, in, if we call this now and give a number, let's say six, we should get five. So here we're expecting five because we've put in six, six and five, run it. Five, great. This is not my favorite solution. So if you want to look at a more in-depth version slash explanation for why this solution works the way it does, look in the description down below because I want to go to what I love, which is recursion. Which is a problem because the most optimal solution is almost never recursion, but for some reason I find recursion fun and it comes to me naturally and I just love it. So the next two solutions are going to be recursive. The first slightly more naive recursive solution is um, a very fun one. So if you know about recursions, you know that you always have to have a base case. There are lots of ways to declare the base case and you can write it however you want. But an immediate reaction is that if n is less than three, meaning two or one, then we should just return n minus one because if it, if it is two, then it's two minus one, which is one. If it's one, then it's one minus one, which is zero and it works. We have to have a base case and a recursive solution, otherwise we're just gonna call it until your computer crashes. And then we have an else statement, maybe. Yes, let's do an else statement. And what we'll do in any other case, that's not the base case, we're gonna call recursive fib1, we're gonna call the function, and we're gonna say n minus one, we're gonna call with n minus one plus plus recursive fib1 n minus two. That's it. So let's try this out. Always test your code when you're done writing it. So let's say we have recursive fib1, we're gonna call it and we're gonna use eight. And eight should return, if you look at our chart, 13. Run, 13, great. Okay, 10 should return 34, 10, 34, awesome. Okay, 
For doing the recursive solution, I would suggest that you have a whiteboarding app or even just a pen and paper so that you can really draw out and visualize the recursive calls because it's going to be a number of branches and a certain type of depth depending on whatever the n given number is. And this way we can figure out that it's going to be the number of branches and something to do with n when we figure out the space and time complexity. Big O notation in terms of time is big O of 2 to the power of n. Space complexity is going to be just O of n, which is pretty good. Uh, each branch of the initial recursive function call will add to the call stack until it is n high. So the space taken is O of n. This is great, but we could actually do it a little bit better. Now the better recursive function would be also know how to spell function. The better recursive function would use memoization, just dynamic programming instead. So you can do this with a hash table or a declare a variable before your function that stores data. So let's call it const initial hash first zero zero one 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 two so it is correlating in that way and we're going to declare a hash inside of the parameters and we're going to say initial hash at least in the beginning and then if the hash table doesn't contain the number that is given yet we need to calculate it and we need to add it if hash num equals undefined and you can write this in lots of different ways if type of hash num uh, equals number then do this or doesn't equal number do this rather the hash table is passed by reference so we're able to add it to any function call in the stack and we're gonna say we're just trying to find out what the hash num is right so we do similar to the first one but now we pass in hash plus fib num minus two let's see here we should call it num here too right make sure <laughs> all your variables are correlating and we want to return it once we reach the end basically let's test this out let's do it with three which should be one and six which should be five so we're expecting one and five one five great so if you visualize this or if you're having trouble visualizing this there is a little diagram in the description down below that explains the branches and the depth that I was talking about in the first recursive solution. But for this recursive solution, we eliminate a whole branch type situation. Basically one whole branch of calculations is removed from each recursive call. So instead of O, a time complexity of O2 to the power of N, now we just have O of N. And space complexity is O of N. The call stack is N high before it's done. Now, the final most optimized solution that I could come up with at least, and if you can come up with something way better, please let me know in the comments, I'm actually curious. And let's call this one Fibby. I would say in an interview situation, don't call your functions such frivolous names, but this is the last one, let's have fun with it. So in the same way that we did in the first iterative solution that we called the naive solution, we're actually going to declare the variables a and b as 0 and 1, the first two in the sequence, right? Then we're going to create a while loop and say when n is greater than 1, we're going to do some stuff. A really important note here, please listen. Whenever you come up with an iterative solution that's using a while loop, an interviewer might ask you, can you do this recursively? The hint is always in the conditional, at least in my opinion, it's always in the conditional of the while loop. You can kind of try to restructure it in a way and see where things fit together so that it can be a recursive solution. And in the same way, if you have a base case in your recursive solution and the interviewer asks you to do it iteratively, you iteratively, you might be able to restructure the base case and how you're recall, recursively calling it by making it into a while loop. In our while loop, we are going to say our variables of A and B are going to be reassigned to just B every time and then A plus B. In this way, it kind of shifts through the loop, but instead 
of, do, of adding, uh, adding incrementally like we did when we incremented in the for loop, we're just adding automatically. And then, so it's gonna be reassigned to A and B, and then B is gonna be reassigned as A plus B for every time we go one further in of N. And then we're just gonna return A, and let's do a test. Fibby of four should return two, if I'm mis not mistaken. So it returns two, and then we should do Fibby of seven should return eight, eight. So great. So as for time complexity for this awesome solution is O of N because we're only making, we're performing constant time solutions for each number up until the input number, up until the given N number, and that leaves us with O of N. As for space complexity, we also have, no, it's not O of N, it's better now, it's O of 1 because it's constant space. So although we initialize an array, we, it doesn't hold a ton of elements. So the space is kind of trivial and we might as well say it's O of 1. I'm going to link a chart of how all of these functions work in terms of time and space complexity as you get up to higher and higher numbers. And there's also some bonus tips. If you don't, if you're not doing this in JavaScript, and I couldn't figure out exactly how to do this in JavaScript, but if you do it in let's say Java or Python or Go or maybe even Joy, uh, there are ways to do it. Then the, the second best way to do it in those languages is a matrix exponentiation solution that I'm going to link down below. And the absolute best solution, according to many, I haven't tried it out yet because I haven't written this in Java. Um, maybe when I take a three day nap after this bootcamp is to just do a mathematical solution using Binet, I think Binet. So that's where we're at with that. So if you like this video, please press like. If you want to see more of this, see more of this, please subscribe. And if you have some comments or questions or you want more coding videos, less coding videos, hopefully you don't want less coding videos because this is the first coding video, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you soon. Bye.